the largest tectonic plate on Earth may be cracking apart right now, beneath the Pacific Ocean. Scientists are detecting earthquakes in the middle of nowhere, volcanoes punching through solid rock, and entire mini-plates peeling off from the giant. If this colossal plate shatters, the consequences could rewrite the map of our planet and unleash disasters on a scale humanity has never seen. But how close are we to that breaking point? Let's dive in. The Pacific Plate is a titan, the single largest slab of crust on Earth. It stretches across more than one-third of the planet's surface, bigger than all of North America and Eurasia combined. And it doesn't just sit still. This giant moves northwest at up to 11 centimeters a year, one of the fastest tectonic plates on the planet. Over millions of years, this restless drift has sculpted the Pacific Ocean Basin, raised volcanic chains like Hawaii, and fueled the fiery ring of fire that surrounds the ocean with volcanoes and earthquakes. For most of the 20th century, scientists saw the Pacific Plate as unbreakable, a stable, coherent block of rock strong enough to transmit stresses across thousands of kilometers. It was the very definition of geological stability. But stability, it turns out, is an illusion. Beneath the waves, subtle cracks and strange tremors are revealing a new truth. The Pacific Plate may not be the solid giant we once believed, and the first signs of its weakness are showing up in the most unexpected places. For decades, scientists believed tectonic plates only broke at their edges, at subduction zones, transform faults, or spreading ridges. But then, the Pacific Plate started breaking the rules. Small but measurable deformations began appearing in what should have been stable regions of the seafloor. And then came something even stranger. Earthquakes, striking far from any plate boundary. These weren't the massive quakes that flattened cities. They were moderate, quiet tremors. But their location was the real shock. They were rumbling through the plate's interior, right where no quake should exist. To geologists, this was the first clue that the Pacific Plate might not be a single, solid block at all. Instead, it could be a giant puzzle, crisscrossed with hidden fractures, some ancient, others brand new. And the strongest evidence of these cracks? Earthquakes. Erupting in places no one expected. Earthquakes usually make sense. They strike at the edges, where plates collide, grind, or sink. But in the heart of the Pacific, scientists began recording quakes with no obvious cause. Near Hawaii, swarms of small tremors rippled through the ocean floor. Far from any subduction zone or fault line, they didn't fit the standard map of tectonic activity. Elsewhere in the central Pacific, isolated quakes appeared in regions long thought stable. Each event was moderate, but together they hinted at something bigger, stresses traveling deep inside the plate itself. To geologists, these intraplate quakes were red flags. A supposedly solid slab of rock was bending, flexing, even cracking under hidden pressure. And when researchers traced those tremors back to their source, they discovered something even more dramatic volcanoes punching holes straight through the Pacific Plate. The strangest quakes weren't random at all. Many clustered around hotspots, places where plumes of magma rise from deep within the mantle, punching through the Pacific Plate like a blowtorch through steel. Hawaii is the clearest example. Each island in the chain is a time marker, built as the plate drifted over a stationary hotspot. But every eruption required the lithosphere to crack, allowing magma to break through rock once thought unbreakable. About 47 million years ago, the Hawaiian emperor chain suddenly bent nearly 60 degrees. That sharp kink reveals a dramatic shift in the Pacific Plate's motion, and a moment when stresses literally redirected the way the crust fractured. And Hawaii isn't alone. In the South Pacific, hotspots beneath Samoa and Tahiti have exploited weaknesses in the plate, forcing up massive volcanoes and hinting that this so-called giant is far more fragile than we once believed. But the most telling sign of instability isn't a single volcano or quake, it's entire fragments of the Pacific Plate breaking off, forming what scientists now call microplates. If earthquakes and volcanoes weren't enough, geologists found an even bigger clue. The Pacific Plate isn't whole anymore. It's splintering into smaller pieces, what scientists call microplates. These fragments often appear where spreading ridges and transform faults intersect in complex patterns called triple junctions. As the Pacific Plate surges forward, stresses concentrate at these weak points until the crust literally cracks apart. Over geological time, microplates don't stay small. They can grow, collide, and carve the once monolithic Pacific Plate into an entirely new mosaic of tectonic pieces. And this isn't the first time Earth has watched a giant plate splinter. In fact, 
history shows us exactly what happens when a so-called unbreakable plate finally collapses. The Pacific plate may look unshakable today, but it isn't the first giant to face the pressure of Earth's forces. Tens of millions of years ago, another colossal plate, the Farallon, stretched across much of the eastern Pacific. Over time, that massive plate was forced beneath the Americas, disappearing piece by piece until only small fragments remained. Three of those fragments survive as their own plates, the Cocos, the Nazca, and the Juan de Fuca. And while the names may sound obscure, their impact is anything but. Off the Pacific Northwest coast, the Juan de Fuca plate is slowly sliding beneath North America. This is the Cascadia subduction zone, a fault line capable of producing one of the most powerful earthquakes on the planet. Geologists warn that Cascadia could unleash a magnitude 9 or greater earthquake, shaking the entire region from Northern California to British Columbia, followed by a devastating tsunami. The Farallon story is proof that no plate, no matter how vast, is immune to collapse. And if the Pacific plate is now showing the same warning signs, then we may be standing on the edge of a new age of earthquakes and eruptions. The instability of the Pacific plate isn't just a scientific puzzle. It's a direct threat to hundreds of millions of people living around its edges. This boundary, known as the Ring of Fire, is already the most active seismic zone on the planet, stretching from Japan and the Philippines, through Indonesia and New Zealand, to Chile, Mexico, and the west coast of North America. More than 800 million people live in these regions, where quakes and eruptions are part of life. But if the Pacific Plate is cracking internally, the danger grows even greater. Stresses inside the plate can redistribute strain along its edges, triggering larger-than-expected earthquakes. Volcanic arcs may reawaken with new force, and intraplate fractures could create hazards in places once thought safe. Scientists are particularly concerned about zones already primed for disaster, like Cascadia in the Pacific Northwest, Japan's Nankai Trough, and the Chilean Trench. Each of these could produce quakes over magnitude 9 with tsunamis crossing entire oceans. And that raises the ultimate question, what happens if the Pacific Plate truly begins to split apart? The Pacific Plate's future is one of geology's greatest mysteries. Some scientists believe it could one day split into two or more massive plates, divided along weaknesses already forming in the South Pacific. Others argue it will slowly shrink, consumed at its edges by subduction. And in the most extreme theories, cracks deep inside the plate could evolve into brand new spreading centers, opening entirely new ocean basins. These sound like distant, science fiction scenarios, and in many ways they are, unfolding over tens of millions of years. But here's the twist. The first signs of that future may already be visible today. The microplates breaking free in the South Pacific, the volcanic scars left by hot spots like Hawaii and Samoa, and the earthquakes erupting in the middle of the ocean where no quake should exist. They all point to one unsettling possibility. The Pacific Plate has already begun to change. From a human perspective, the real question isn't what happens in 50 million years. It's what happens in the next 50, or even the next five. If stresses are already shifting inside the plate, they could make some of the planet's most dangerous subduction zones far more unstable. Cascadia in the Pacific Northwest, the Nankai Trough in Japan, the Chilean Trench, all capable of producing magnitude 9 megaquakes. Could the cracking of the Pacific Plate make those ticking time bombs even more explosive? And history reminds us that this isn't hypothetical. Cascadia last ruptured in the year 1700, sending a tsunami all the way to Japan. Chile's 1960 earthquake, the strongest in recorded history, hit magnitude 9.5 and Japan's Tohoku earthquake in 2011 unleashed a tsunami that devastated Fukushima and echoed across the Pacific. These disasters were triggered at the plate's edges. Imagine what happens if the stresses inside the plate itself start feeding into those same fault lines. The instability of the Pacific plate is both a warning and a challenge. A warning, because it shows us that even Earth's largest features are temporary. And a challenge, because if we can better understand these cracks and tremors now, we can build safer cities, strengthen monitoring, and prepare for what comes next. The Pacific Plate may be restless, but this story is far from over. If you want to stay ahead of Earth's hidden forces, from megaquakes to supervolcanoes, make sure to subscribe. There's much more beneath the surface than we ever imagined.